Steam locomotives in miniature at the steam workshop. This is part 17, fixing the smoke box door hinges and looking at the boiler fittings. On the screen at the moment though are the component parts for a box. And here is the finished box being screwed together. The steam workshop ship engines all over the world, so it's very important that they arrive in one piece. And now down to business. At the moment I'm repairing the hinge pin mountings. These small mounting hinges are bolted to the front of the smoke box door and with a hinge pin support the smoke box. The original hinge pin was rusted solid into these, so I had to remove the old hinge pin and the hinges in one unit so I could cut it off and drill it out. Thankfully that part of the job has been done. All I have to do now is put it back together using the new hinge pin that I made and this one's made from stainless steel so it's not going to rust any time soon. Time now to fit the hinges to the smoke box using a box spanner with my barco spanner on the end of it to allow me to turn it. There isn't a great deal of space inside a 5 inch gauge smoke box to get the spanner in, especially when it's been held in my great big overscale hands. So using the hinge pin to make sure everything lines up, it's time to fit the smoke box door. Once I put the smoke box door on though, it wasn't quite so easy to refit the pin because the holes didn't line up perfectly. After removing the smoke box door, it's time to paint the hinge brackets. Once again, I'm using this really good paint that the Steam Workshop use. This is satin black, but it's more like matte black. It's very much on the matte side of things. And when it's used to paint certain parts of a miniature steam locomotive, it's a really good complement to any gloss paint that is on the locomotive and just adds that authentic look to the model. It reminds me of how locomotives used to look when I was a child. From a very early age I spent a lot of time watching the trains go by because the house that I lived in conveniently overlooked a railway station. Have a look at this old black and white photograph, I think I was about two years old in this. So this photograph was probably taken in 1955 and you can clearly see the massive goods shed with the tower sticking up above it. And when I got into my teens my friends and I used to climb up that tower which was very dangerous but such is life and I think I survived. The goods shed is long gone, demolished many many years ago and it is now a car park. But all things must pass and 63 years later I find myself working at the steam workshop removing paint from a tube that supports the chimney on this small locomotive. The amount of effort that I had to put into this bears up how good the paint is. The etching primer was really doing its job but eventually I got most of it off. But I left a small amount of paint around the base of this chimney tube so when the chimney is fitted it's quite a tight fit. This clip shows me tapping it into place with a small piece of wood. The reason for making the chimney a tight fit is so that if anybody tries to turn it, the bottom part that's shaped to fit the smoke box won't damage the smoke box paintwork. This clip shows me fitting the stainless steel hinge pin into the brackets. And again this was quite a tight fit when it was through the smoke box hinge itself, so I also tapped that into place. And you will notice that I'm being very careful not to mark the paint. The part that I'm fitting at the moment is called the smoke box dart. And it's called a dart because it has a pointy end that goes through the crossbar inside the smoke box. And by tightening it up, it holds the smoke box door firmly against the smoke box. So, how does it work? Well, it's quite simple. The lever that's closest to the smoke box on the washer has a square hole in the middle of it and that matches the part of the shaft that's been squared off just before it goes into the smoke box door, and the outer part of the shaft is just threaded, which takes the other lever. Here I'm changing the position of the smoke box dart, turning it upside down effectively, so that the levers are now at 10 to 2. And why did I do this? Well, the engine looked quite unhappy with the smoke box dart levers at 20 past 8 which coincidentally is the time I'm currently doing this voiceover, now that is a very strange thing. One viewer commented that there wasn't much levity in the last episode and I'm really sorry about that, but unfortunately if I had a late night the night before and I get up about half past six in the morning to do these videos and voiceovers and sometimes I'm video editing and voicing over just after I've removed a load of idiot comments off the channel. In the steam workshop next to the bench that's to the left of where I am is a traction engine and it's been dismantled ready for a new coat of paint and if you look at this engine closely you will realize just how many parts need to be removed just to paint it. Back to my job this is the boiler with the coat of paint on it this is the color it's going to be by the way chocolate brown. 
and this is the same colour that the engines on the London Brighton South Coast Railway, or LBSCR, were painted in. And Simon's logic for painting it chocolate brown was, well, it's going to be finished round about Easter, so we'll go with the chocolate theme. By the way, it's currently 2018, and Easter's just round the corner. It's the 23rd of March, so there's about a week to go, so the engine will be ready just after Easter, I would think. And it's probably just as well because the weather in England recently has been very strange for the time of year. We've been having quite a lot of snow. And apparently, I'm told, that snow is also forecast for the bank holiday weekend around Easter. So maybe we should have painted the engine white. Anyway, we'll see whether it snows or not. Just in case you're wondering what I'm doing at the moment, I'm doing a dummy run of the fittings to see how they line up on the boiler backhead. And the good news is, the fittings line up very well with the bushes on the back end of the boiler, and there's only a washer fitted to one of the fittings. This is most unusual. Normally you need to fit shim washers to get them into the right position, but not so with this engine. When I finally put the fittings in place, I'll be using some Loctite 542 to seal the threads. The bush for the left-hand clack is very close to the bush for the water gauge, and at first I couldn't fit the clack valve because the water gauge was in the way, so I removed that, fitted the clack valve, and then refitted the water gauge. I even had to take the nut off because that got in the way. As you can see, they're very close together. So that's the backhead fittings in place, well, temporarily of course. Now I'm going to look at the regulator. I'll put the regulator arm on and we have a problem. I'm pretty sure that inside the steam dome is what's called a Stroudley regulator. And just in case you don't understand my northern accent, I've put the spelling on screen. If you want to know more about Stroudley regulators, please Google it. There's plenty of information online about them. A Stroudley regulator is a slide valve regulator with two operating arms. And it's normally situated inside the steam dome in the centre of the boiler. And because this type of regulator has more moving parts, there's more to go wrong with it. Whenever you're working on small steam engines, you have to be very gentle with them. What I could do is put a lot of pressure on this regulator and maybe it would work, maybe it would free off, maybe it would snap off inside the boiler. So I'm not going to risk that. What can happen though, and I've seen this happen on many occasions, when you put water in the boiler, even before you boil up the water, the regulator can suddenly free off. Or sometimes the regulator remains stuck until the water is heated. So my plan is to put all the fittings on the back head of the boiler Fit the boiler into the frames, connect it up to the cylinders, etc, etc, and then steam the boiler on the bench on a rolling road using a gas burner. And that way I will find out whether the regulator is serviceable or not. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.